Okay, so in our last video, we dealt with kind of generic rates of change, especially when they're in application problems. We're going to be talking about slope of lines, equations, y equals mx plus b. So this is going to be dealing more with variables and equations than actual real world applications like the last one was. So let me show you kind of a picture here. So say we've got a line, looks something like this. If we want to find the slope of the line, what we do is we pick out two points. So let's say this point right here is the point x1, y1 and then pick another point, and we'll say this is the point x2, y2. Okay, so if we wanted to find the slope between those two points, we would use these actual coordinate points in a formula. So if you are trying to find the slope, we've got a bunch of different ways we can define it. We can define it as change in y over change in x, like we did in the previous set of notes. Um, we can say, yeah, let's write that. Okay, so change in y over change in x, same way that we defined it up above. Since we're on a coordinate plane, you can think of this as like the change in the two y coordinates and the change in the two x coordinates. So change in y means the ending y value minus the starting y value in the numerator, and then change in x is the ending x value minus the starting x value. So this formula I'm really hoping is familiar. And so what this gives you it gives you basically the steepness of a line. So the bigger this number is, the steeper the line will appear. We can also have positive or negative slopes. This would be a positive slope. If our graph was going the other way, it would be a negative slope. And then, just so you know, we have two other types of lines. Most of our lines are diagonal, so they'll have some sort of numerical slope. We could also have horizontal lines, so a horizontal slope. is whoops is zero. So if you just have a straight line, there's no change in y. And since there's no change in y, the numerator would be zero, so your slope would be zero. If you have a vertical line, we say that's undefined. Okay, so those are two sort of special cases. You could have a horizontal line or a vertical line. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero. Vertical lines have a slope that is undefined. And same thing, if you were going straight up and down, there's no change in x, so your denominator would be zero, which of course is not something that we can do. So let's use this formula to find the slope between these two points. So I've always found it easy to just take the points and kind of label them, like label this x1, y1, label this one x2, y2, and then you know everything can just kind of slip into the formula really easily. So let's write the formula first. And just for quick and easy reference, instead of writing out the word slope, we've always used m to define the slope. So here's our formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and then since we've got everything labeled, we can just sub them right in. So y2 is negative 2 minus y1, which is 4, over x2, which is 1, minus x1, which is a negative 1. Okay, so negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6 over, and then 1 minus negative 1, remember that changes to plus a positive. So we get 2, and then that reduces down. Negative 6 divided by positive 2 is a negative 3. So the slope between those lines would be a negative 3. So that means, first of all, that it's sloping the opposite way that this line does. It means every time my x value goes up 1, my y value goes down 3. That's what that slope means. Okay, let's look at some based off of graphs with example 4. Okay, so basically we're dealing with the same thing, but instead of having two ordered pairs, we just have a graph in front of us, so we have to figure out where the ordered pairs are. So if we pick, you want to look for a place where it crosses like right through the corners. So this one, let's see, looks like it crosses through a corner right there, and it looks like it crosses through a corner right there. Okay, so when you're trying to figure out slope, you want the change in y, compared to the change in x. So change in y is how many units you go up or down. So from this point to this point, we go up one box, the difference between these two, but you can see on the label, this is not actually one unit, this is supposed to be two units, because it's labeled as two, four, six, eight. So change in y, you go up two units, which means a positive two, and then over to the right, one, two, three boxes, but again, look at the scale. It's actually two, four, six. And two over six reduces down to one over three. So it's basically like a ratio thing. It's like every time y goes up one, x goes over to the right three. 
and it would repeat that pattern. So it would go up one, over to the right three, just like that. Okay, let's look at this one. So same thing, you wanna find points where it looks like it's crossing right through a corner. So it looks like it's crossing through right there and maybe right there. Okay, so we're trying to count change in Y compared to change in X. So change in Y, from this point down to this point, I go down one, two, three, four grids. There's no scaling, so we know it actually is four grids. Remember, going down means negative. So I go down four units, that's a negative four. And then after I go down four, I go over one to the right. So my change in X would be a positive one. Going to the right is positive. So that we can just write as a negative four. So again, what that means is every time Y goes down four, X goes over to the right one, and it repeats that pattern over and over. All right, let's look at the last one. Kind of a challenge problem here. Find the value of R, so like there's a missing value in one of these points, but we know the slope. So let's set up the slope formula. We're gonna be using this. This is something that should absolutely be memorized as soon as possible. So here's what we know. We've got our first point, x1, y1. Remember I said it helps to label them. This point we can write x2, y2, and then this is m. So rather than what we were doing on the previous page where we know all this stuff, but we don't know this, we know what the slope is. We're missing one of these pieces. So let's fill everything in that we know. m is 1 3rd. y2 is what we don't know. That's r. So we're just going to fill in an r, and that's our variable that we're going to solve for. Minus y1, which is 1 over x2 is 5 minus x1 is 8. So we get all that filled in and then we can simplify. So we've got 1 third equals r minus 1. We can't really do anything with that. We just write it exactly the way it is over 5 minus 8 which is negative 3. And then what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get the r by itself. So since it's in a proportion here we can cross multiply. So multiply these two together Distribute the 3 to the r minus 1, and I get 3r minus 3 equals, and then multiply these two together, 1 times negative 3, we get negative 3. So just a couple steps to get r by itself. We can add the 3 to both sides, and if you look, what happens here is they both cancel out. So all I have on the right is a 0, technically. And then I have 3r equals 0, so really quickly I can divide by 3 to get that r by itself. 0 divided by 3 is still 0. So the value of r that's missing is actually a value of 0. So that completes that slope formula.